So the One Love exhibit, which honors your father, is open in Toronto, which is a huge honor to be chosen for the North American premiere. So why Toronto? Why not Toronto? That is the attitude <laughs> I like. <laughs> why not Toronto? Welcome to News Can Use. I'm your host, Devin Banfield, in for BG. Today, we're downtown at One Young Street at the One Love Bob Marley Experience. This experience is full of different artifacts from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Marley's own collection, and unique works of art that really paint a picture of who Bob Marley was, not only as a musician, but as a father, a friend, and as a person. I had the opportunity to sit down with his daughter, Sadella Marley, to discuss who her father was and how the family's carrying on the Bob Marley legacy. Let's bring her in. Sadella Marley, welcome to News Can Use and the Brandon Gunnish Show. Oh, thank you for having me. And welcome to Toronto. So the One Love exhibit, which honors your father, is open in Toronto, which is a huge honor to be chosen for the North American premiere. So why Toronto? Why not Toronto? That is the attitude <laughs> I like. <laughs> why not Toronto? You know, it, it's like, first of all, Toronto, we have a lot of family here. Yes. Um, Toronto has a huge Caribbean community. Um, and Daddy really loved playing here, okay. you know, so it just made sense. Why was it so important for you to be so heavily involved in the curation of this One Love exhibit or experience? Nothing that we do that is going to be using Daddy's image, um, lyrics or anything and I'm not involved in. Okay. You know, um, I go over things with a fine tooth comb and um, the results are actually better. You come from reggae royalty or reggae royalty yourself. What is it like being Bob Marley's daughter? Um, it's cool. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's like I, I don't know how to be anybody else's daughter. Okay. So I'm just used to being his daughter and my mom's daughter. So it's like, it's cool. What does it mean to be a Marley? What does it mean to be a Marley? Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 you have a responsibility that is greater than you. My dad, my dad once said, if my life is just for me, I don't want it. My life is to be able to affect change. And so you, you feel like you, you have to continue that message of unity, togetherness, you know, one love. Um, and so I think we have inherited some of those traits. Um, and we're grateful. How have you been working to further the Marley legacy? Well, I mean, my, my job is to oversee everything in the licensing world. It's a big job, but um, I've been doing it so long now that it, it's kind of, I have a great team. I have a great team of people. And so the, the legacy is, is more about protecting it. Is that why your family has held the catalog of music so close? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's his music. You know, and if, if he can't be the one making the decisions on what should happen, the next best people to make that decision would be us. Of all of the songs, which are legendary around households around the world, yeah. I have to know what your favorite one is. My favorite one, and I know I've said it so many times, I think my brothers and my sister is getting like really <laughs> mad at me now, uh, but it is the one that he wrote for me. Um, my, my, my nickname as a baby was Nice Time. And he, he wrote that song when I, he wrote and recorded that song when I was born. What is your favorite memory with your father? Um, maybe on the beach, jogging on the beach. He would love to run relays, right? And I don't know if your dad and you ever like ran a relay or anything mm -hmm. like this, but in the park, my, my father, um, he was not going to let us win. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, tough yeah. Tough love. Tough. Very tough. One love, tough love. Yeah, one love, tough love. <laughs> yeah, love no it. love. <laughs> he was a lover, but not yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, not like <laughs> that. It wasn't like, he never made it easy. You know, but it, it, was, it was a challenge. And we were always up for the challenge, you know, because we knew he was not going to take it easy on us. You, in your own right, have done so much incredible work, whether it's writing children's books, whether it's philanthropy, all the work you've done for the women's soccer team down in Jamaica. Why is philanthropy so important to you? Remember, Daddy, Daddy was a welder. My mom used to clean houses for a living when they moved to Wilmington, Delaware. And my parents were always the ones that they taught us how to be giving people and how not to, 
how not to be envious or jealous of anything else anyone has, you know, because you can work to attain the same level. But to be able to, to give back, it, it just feels good. We do our things very silently, you know, because the best thing is, is the ones that you help to come back and say to you, you have made a difference in my life. And I'm sure that's happened to you. And that's lot. happened. And that, that, that is where, you know, that is our reward. We couldn't ask for more. What's one thing that you want the whole world to know about your dad? He was really funny. Okay. Yeah, he was, he, he could, I mean, he couldn't be like a stand-up comedian, okay. but he could entertain his children. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good dad. That's yeah, he was a good dad. dad. He was a good dad, man. I mean, he could entertain us for hours and hours, just playing different characters, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that it could be a movie star, you know, to be honest. Like, he could act a little bit too. Um, but he was just funny. He was really funny. And what was it like for you, just being a woman and being able to empower the Jamaican women's soccer team to get to the World Cup? I just have to know. Listen, um, that is still like, it's like I know it happened. It's like I know it happened, right? But it's surreal but it's still surreal because we're getting ready to go do it again. The best thing for me about that journey was really getting these young women to believe that they could do anything, no matter what, how the cliche sounds, when you're living in it and you actually see it happens, you kind of go, it's real. And my final question for you, I'm Vinci, but the Brandon Gonez Show, we're a Jamaican owned company, so I need to know, you go for dinner? Curry, goat, or oxtail? What's your pick? Oh, I'm a vegetarian. Me too, but yeah. I had to ask. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I do like the gravy. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I do like the gravy. <laughs> so tell them, Marley, thank you so much for joining thank us on you. News You Can Use. Thank you. Hey, BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel. And listen to this, we have more great content for you, like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.